when it comes to success in the online classroom, there are a number of factors which come into play. Students may be coming into college for the first time, or they may be returning after becoming parents and working full or part-time jobs. Some may have plenty of time to dedicate to classes, while others are under very tight time constraints. Some may understand the intricacies of academic integrity, while others may still need introduction to those expectations. Here, Dr. Kim Hardy, Executive Director of Student Success and Learning Engagement, and Melanie Clark, Open Campus Associate Dean of Student Success, will help you decode some of the mysteries surrounding the challenge, how to help adult learners find success in online classes by offering concrete strategies for dealing with common issues facing online adult learners. Adult learners typically face many challenges, such as juggling full-time jobs, families, travel, and readjusting to the school environment. It may have been years since a student has been in school and needs to get used to making classes a priority and fitting it into their schedules. Not to mention relearning how to study and prepare for things like taking tests and writing papers again. There are a number of resources that instructors can refer students to for assistance with these, which Melanie will be discussing. However, as an instructor, simply knowing all of the competing areas adult students are facing can give you a much broader perspective of how to build some flexibility into your courses for a student. Adult learners tend to like structure and organization, so having a course that has a good logical flow and is organized very efficiently is helpful. Also, students love being able to see and talk with their instructor for that more personal touch. Sometimes in online courses, we tend to conduct our business only through email or online discussions. However, students really enjoy having live chat sessions with instructors beyond office hours. Having a chat during the first week of class is a great way to be proactive, set a positive tone for the term, and address any questions or concerns from students in the beginning of the course. However, adult learners have full-time jobs, many with hours into the late evening. It is good to have at least two different days or times for chat sessions with students, perhaps one during the day and one in the late evening or weekend to best accommodate student needs. It also is very helpful to create a video of yourself welcoming your students during the first week of the class. This makes it seem like you are more approachable as an instructor and you are not the wizard behind the blackboard curtain that they never see. This does not have to be lengthy, and realistically, anything more than two to three minutes can be a challenge for students to view if they do not have a very good internet connection. However, this practice goes a long way in bringing a more personal feel to your course and your students. Another challenge many adult learners tend to face is a lack of technology skills. Surprisingly, though we assume most of our students are tech savvy, many are not familiar with computers or only familiar with certain applications they use, such as email or social networking websites, such as Facebook or LinkedIn. It is helpful to create a video that provides students with a visual of how to do something or what you expect. For example, I prefer to use course messages rather than email, so I may keep all the communication in my course contained within the course shell. So, I created a video using Jing, a free screen capture software, to show my students how to send me a message using this function. This is posted in my announcements during the first week of classes. There are many things that we can do outside the classroom and inside the classroom to help students to be better prepared for success in the online environment. Last fall, we piloted an evaluation with about 400 students who took an assessment called Smarter Measure. This assessment provided students with information about their skills and readiness in personal attributes like time management, willing to ask for help, and locus of control. Life factors such as availability of time and a dedicated place to study, and support resources from family and friends, learning styles, reading skills, technical knowledge and proficiency, and typing skills. What we found preliminarily is that students need help in personal attributes and life factors areas in greater numbers than in the other areas. With this knowledge ahead of time, students and college staff can work together to make sure that students are aware of the issues they face and provide the appropriate supports. Awareness is a key first step. If an assessment isn't available to help students identify their levels of readiness, helping them to know what skills they need to be successful can help. 
Open Campus offers resources for study skills and success tips through two Blackboard communities maintained by the Student Success Center. We would be glad to give you more information on these. Just email or give us a call. Though many instructors prefer to keep discussions on track and open them only during the weeks in which they are scheduled, many students like to work ahead when their schedule allows. Rather than opening a discussion early or at the beginning of the class to accommodate this, a great method is simply to list the discussion questions in the syllabus or in Blackboard so students can access them and prepare for them in advance, but not post them to the discussion board until the assigned week. This is a good practice also for any assignments that you may have in your course. Instructors vary on how they prefer to schedule tests and how many times they allow students to take them. However, one of the most important considerations for adult learners is flexibility in when they can take their exams. One good method is to keep your exam open for one week, including a weekend, but limit the actual time a student has to take the test, for example, two hours. This allows for greater flexibility for the student, but allows the instructor to stay within their preferred parameters, such as the test taking time or the number of attempts. There are several college student success resources available to online students. The District Welcome Center provides registration, advising, and financial aid assistance. The Career Development Centers help students to identify their majors and transition planning. The library has many online research and reference resources. Local students have access to the campus tutoring services and student life and leadership activities. And now students have a new student assistance program similar to an employee assistance program to provide personal, legal, and financial counseling services. The Open Campus Student Success staff members are also available to help with any referrals that might be needed. Many instructors have experienced the situation where students disagree with other opinions, are dissatisfied with the way the course is going, or may be experiencing a personal trauma that is affecting their behavior. There are times, particularly during discussions in open forums, when students may not have the proper etiquette or be disruptive to the educational process. Depending on the situation, these sometimes can be very fragile situations that can negatively impact the tone of the course. It is important to be proactive in the course and set the stage in the beginning. For instance, I provide a guide for discussion postings that I require students to read during the first week, which outlines the proper and respectful tone that is necessary for discussions and interactions with other students and the professor. I also include a netiquette guide for those who may not be familiar with computers in the online environment, expressing that a comment can easily be mistaken for a different meaning, particularly without the aid of facial expressions and body language. Therefore, it is critical to review your post carefully before submitting. One other great resource, particularly for students who are experiencing a more personal crisis, is our college's new student assistance program, which allows students to connect with a professional counselor to discuss any issues. As an instructor, you play an integral role in the discipline process for student conduct, particularly in the area of academic integrity. As a proactive measure to this, I have created a 10-question quiz on plagiarism for certain courses and require students to complete this with 100% accuracy as part of the non-attendance drop. This ensures that they are aware of what plagiarism is during the first week of class. Many adult learners who have been out of the academic environment for some time may need a refresher on how and when to cite sources, so I have found this to be a wonderfully successful strategy. However, if you do have the misfortune to encounter an academic dishonesty situation, you have the right to take several actions, such as providing the student with a warning, requiring them to retake a test or rewrite an assignment, failing them for the assignment, and failing them for the course. If, after all of this, you continue to experience issues, you should refer the student to the Open Campus Student Success Office for further action. After an instructor has exhausted their options for classroom management, the Office of Student Success has a responsibility for student disciplinary action. When a student issue is referred to the Associate Dean of Student Success, an initial investigation is conducted. 
If the charges appear to be warranted, the student is afforded due process through an administrative or discipline committee hearing. If charges are found to be true, the disciplinary actions can include warning, probation, or suspension. This all may sound a bit daunting, but maintaining discipline in the classroom and throughout the college helps to foster and ensure the best learning environments for all students. I hope that we can help you to do this. I really enjoy having adult learners in my classes and view them as such an asset to the learning that takes place. Adult learners usually come with a wealth of experience and are able to share their knowledge with other students. It is nice for other students who may not have experience in the field to learn more about these intricacies from those who are working in a particular industry. Additionally, adult learners tend to take the lead in many areas, such as discussion boards and group projects, and can really be a positive influence in the course, helping guide other students who may not be on track. Engaging them in these areas and letting them know that you would like for them to share their knowledge with the class creates a great partnership in furthering their education.